Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning and welcome to worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church of Wells, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Mary Iverson and I'm grateful for this team that helps lead worship. Our preacher today, Meg Sander, Brad Hagen is our taping technician, Andy Grosskreutz is the worship assistant, and our COVID-19 quintet is leading music once again today. Jean Carlson is at the piano. McKenna Erickson, Sandy Hartman, John Melby, Bill Grosskreutz Jr. are the vocalists. And I thank everybody for this team that has allowed us to continue leading worship so we can stay connected spiritually even though we are physically distant from one another. Uh, the Easter season is underway. Easter is not just one day on the calendar, but in the church it is a season, uh, a rich, wonderful season where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So for these seven weeks, uh, we are beginning a sermon series um, each week, beginning last week with the Easter story, we are reading about one of the resurrection appearances of Jesus. We'll be reading from all four Gospels during this sermon series and reading them in what seems to be the likely order of the appearances of Jesus, at least according to biblical scholars. So Pastor Meg will begin that sermon series with a story from Mark. We will continue worshiping on Wednesday evenings as well as Sunday morning. This Wednesday evening, high school senior McKenna Erickson, who's here with us singing today, she is sharing her faith story and will also sing Hold an Evening Prayer. So just a reminder, that's Wednesday at 6.15, and it will be broadcast on both, both Facebook Live and on our live stream website. Included in our prayers today is the family of Sybil Brown Pavey. Sybil grew up here in Wells, the daughter of the late Lou and Charlie Brown. Sybil died last Monday in the Omaha, Nebraska area. She had been in hospice for two weeks. And so we lift up in prayer Sybil's husband, Norman, and his family as they grieve the death of Sybil. We also continue to pray for Pastor Kathy Fullerton who had served as a pastor here at Good Shepherd. Uh, Kathy is in hospice at this time. The church office has mailing addresses for both the Fullertons and Sybil Pavey's family. If you would like to reach out to either of those families, you can call the church office during office hours and Andy can get you those addresses. Our last announcement is that on Friday, we mailed out the monthly voice newsletter. We're not doing it necessarily right on the first of the month. We had sent one out a month ago and felt the need to send one out now. It is a shorter version of the voice and it's in a different format because it cost half as much and we had half as much information to put in it. So please watch in the mail. In the coming days it'll come in a legal size envelope from the church so please watch for that and read that as it has a lot of information in it about the happenings at the church and the different things that we're doing um, in this time of the pandemic. Those are the announcements. As we continue worship, we'll be singing Easter hymn. It's in your red hymnal, 392. The hymn is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
as we worship today, we give God thanks. We, we give, give thanks, thanks that God is our faithful provider. Today, some are in need of strength. Overwhelmed with the struggles of today. Today, some are in need of hope. Feeling like giving up. And some are in need of love. Feeling alone. We trust that God will provide for us today. Whether it be through the words or the music. For we know that God is with us as we worship. God is with us, providing strength and hope and love. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, after your death and resurrection, you sent your followers into the world to proclaim your resurrection to the entire world. Send us into our communities to bear witness to all that you have done in our lives. Amen. And then reading our psalm for today, it is Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud, loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. See, he subdued peoples under us, nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits in his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of God, the people of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. We sing now an Alleluia verse before and after the scripture reading, singing from hymn 383. Our scripture reading is from the 16th chapter of Mark, verses 9 through 15. Now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he peered in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he scolded them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he was risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Here ends the scripture. Chorus. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace promises to you from God our Creator, Jesus our risen Savior, and the Holy Spirit who gives us the strength we need to carry on. Amen. I want to encourage you to respond when I say Christ is risen, to respond with, He is risen indeed. Because I think when you speak out loud the truth, it helps you to believe it. Don't be worried about your pets staring at you what, <laughs> when you shout out the words, He is risen indeed, or other people in your family. Just be bold. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Do you believe it? Do you believe that Christ is risen? Christ appears to Mary Magdalene and she goes and tells the others, but they don't believe it. Then the two going out into the country saw Jesus, but others still refused to believe it. Eventually, Jesus stands in front of his disciples as living proof, proof that death had been conquered and that the scriptures had been fulfilled. But the disciples were just sitting there in disbelief instead of out spreading the good news that Christ was risen. Maybe they were confused and trying to make sense of everything Maybe they were uncertain about their futures and trying to figure out what to say and do. We find ways to deal with death and grieving, but how do we deal with life and the resurrection? Especially when we're cooped up and some with parents, some with kids and pets. Is the resurrection too good to be true? How can we be witnesses to something we haven't seen. The resurrection can seem like a remote event that has nothing to do with what's happening in our lives right now. But believe it and live it because that's what God calls us to do whenever we experience new life, whenever strength is renewed and hope is reborn, when love is rekindled and neighborly care is given, whenever kindness is shown to everyone we experience resurrection. And when we can recognize these resurrection moments, then we can go and tell the world what we have seen and heard. That's our call, to minister to one another's needs and proclaim the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We're doing good. We experience resurrection moments in a card, a call, the listening ear and the comforting words of a friend. We are witnesses to the resurrection in the hospitality of a stranger, the beauty of nature, plants peeking through the ground, and the awesomeness of a sunrise and a sunset. For us to speak of new life in the midst of turmoil and despair may seem impossible. How can we be alive in Christ when our lives appear to be falling apart. A loved one dies, the economy stinks, you lose your job, career cancer strikes, you have to find proper care for your aging parents. The coronavirus has us feeling weary and drained, overwhelmed and worried. Where is the risen Christ when everything around us seems to point to the contrary? There's hunger and poverty going on all around us. Loneliness and emptiness surround us. We act as if the Christ who died on Good Friday wasn't raised from the dead and isn't alive. We may believe it, but we don't live it. Even though we're sheltering in place, we can still pray and reach out to others through calls and cards. You can make masks. You can make the ear protectors for masks. We can text, we can put kind messages on the window. We don't need to close ourselves off from the world, acting like Christ is dead in our lives. 
We may mope around moaning about all the troubles and problems in the world because it's easier to criticize others. Selfishness, selfishness wants to dominate the thoughts and actions in our lives. It's easy to become paralyzed by fear and the unknown. But how can we help others come alive in Christ when we act as though the resurrection never happened? Christ did rise from the grave just as surely as he endured the cross to take away our sins. Christ is with us always as he promised. That never changes. Because Christ is alive. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is there with us. And because of that, we live also. There will always be pain and devastation around us, but in the midst of the darkness, there are signs of the resurrection. Destruction, disease, injustice, pain, suffering, and even death vividly illustrate the power of sin to separate us from God. But they don't have the last word. There's new life, new hope, and a new day dawns. But how can we believe that Christ is alive when we're feeling despair and numbness that leaves us helpless? In a world that seems to be pulled more and more toward separation rather than reconciliation and togetherness, there is hope. Jesus comes to meet us in the midst of our daily struggles, in the emptiness, the pain, and the brokenness. And Christ continues to meet us in the ups and downs, the joys and sorrows of our daily lives. Christ is there, right smack dab in the middle of life. Believe it and live it. The power of the gospel is found, found precisely in the miracle that even in the midst of our own sorrow, we literally don't know what will happen next. God comes to us through the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the living Christ and gives us peace. It is this creator God who does not leave us without direction, comfort, or hope. So what are we going to do now? We are called to be witnesses to the resurrection. We are called to care for others and keep going until there is no person in need. And it begins right here right now with you and with me as we let christ work in us and through us we are better able to minister to the needs of others every day it doesn't matter if we are in the middle of celebration or in the depths of despair we are called to respond with joy and thanksgiving for the opportunity god continues to give us to worship and witness and to serve this virus isn't going to last forever, and it isn't going to defeat us, because Christ has already won the victory for us all. Jesus' resurrection may seem far away and a long time ago to us, and its reality may seem, may make a different, little difference in our lives, but Jesus tenderly meets us in the water of baptism, in the fellowship of believers, and in the warmth of relationships. Jesus reveals himself in the power of God's word and in the presence of those who offer kindness and a helping hand. It is my hope and prayer that on the other side of this pandemic, we don't lose the gift of loving and caring for others, and we will all continue to respond with the words of Bill Withers. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till you're going to need somebody to lean on. Let us continue to lean on each other from a distance as we lean on the living Christ who is here with us every day, now and always. Believe it. Love God and live it every day. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We sing together, I love to tell the story in the Red Book, 661. our common faith, our common belief, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Good morning. The beautiful weather this weekend is a blessing. God's blessings include the beauty all around us on warm, sunny days. God has blessed us with a wonderful congregation at Good Shepherd. We respond in gratitude by continuing to support the ministry of Good Shepherd. During this offering time, I invite you to gather our gifts together 
and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. You are able to make a donation by visiting the Good Shepherd website. The address is goodshepherdwells.org. On the right side of the home page, click on Giving, and then Online Giving. You can also put your offering in the mail and send it to the church at 291 First Street Southwest, Wells, Minnesota, 56097. Thank you for your faithful support of the ministry of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for the return of the beautiful springtime weather. We're grateful for the joy of the Easter season, the hope that is ours because of the resurrection of Jesus. We give you thanks that you bless us with the privilege to share the good news of the resurrection with others. Strengthen us to share this good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, as we endure our lives as they are now, this new normal, we pray for all the heroes around us who are on the front lines. We pray for those who are stocking the food, the food shelves and the grocery shelves. We pray for those who are trucking our essential needs. We pray for those who are feeding our hungry school children, those caring for beloved people in care centers those who are first responders and nurses and doctors. Give them all strength and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who suffer at this time. We lift up in prayer those who have lost their jobs in recent weeks, those who struggle as they own their own businesses. We pray for those for whom home is not peaceful or safe. We pray for those who are most vulnerable. We pray as well for our elected leaders, both local, state, and national. Inspire our leaders, Lord God, to discern and care for the health and safety of our country. Help us trust in your faithful presence, for you have promised that you are with us always, God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the great physician. We grieve. We grieve with those who have lost their lives in recent weeks. We lift up and prayer the families of Sybil, Sybil Brown Pavey, Shirley Salzman. We pray for those who have died of the coronavirus. Bless them all with the hope of the promised resurrection. We pray for the healing for those who are sick with the virus. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way. We lift up and pray to you, Lord God, Bebo Getchell, as he continues his cancer treatment. We pray for Pastor Kathy Fullerton. And we give thanks to you, God, that you do not abandon us. You stick with us always. You bring healing and strength. Help us to trust in you always. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, God, knowing that you hear our every prayer. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the living God who raised Jesus from the dead bless you and keep you. May God raise, raise up within you new life. May you be filled with strength and peace to serve as witnesses. Amen. Uh, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our closing hymn is also in your red hymnal, 253. He came down. <laughs>